Turn back the clock to tens of millions of years ago. The heat of carbon filled the atmosphere and the surface of Earth was covered with seawater. Plankton floated in that water and grew consuming the carbon. When these living lumps of carbon died, they piled up on the ocean floor and went through a process of sedimentation. Heat and pressure were applied to the sediments, creating a fossil fuel that we call petroleum. Petroleum has given humankind a new type of civilization. In 1954, people succeeded in inventing a new type of material from petroleum called styrofoam. Even on this beautiful beach, you will find styrofoam. At Santa Monica Beach in Los Angeles, regular cleanups are carried out by a U.S. environmental group. Since the last cleanup a month ago, the beach has already been taken by ocean trash. Even just after a few minutes, they were finding enough to fill the garbage bags. Most of the trash was styrofoam. Um, it's one of the top three items we find. Styrofoam is during our beach cleanups, and once it gets out into the ocean, it's really expensive to clean up. There is nowhere that styrofoam trash can't go. The site out here is disastrous, and unfortunately, it is a common site along the west coast of the Japanese island Tsushima. Since long ago, styrofoam trash has been a huge problem on Tsushima. Getting rid of the styrofoam trash costs a lot of money. Silently, but quickly, the white demon is eating away at the ocean. Styrofoam was invented to make our lives more convenient, but now it is threatening our ocean. No country is safe from the invasion of styrofoam trash. We also use a styrofoam buoy. So after typhoon, lots of uh, styrofoam buoy just come to the, the beach. Uh, there are certain areas where styrofoam is very dominant. More and more animals are dying from our waste in the ocean. And styrofoam is one of the biggest problems. Looking at the monitored ocean trash results from 2008 to 2012, styrofoam represents the second largest part of the trash after plastic. By volume, it is at the top. It makes up 33% of the total ocean trash. Styrofoam boys are the most commonly found ocean trash in Korea. Researchers also point to styrofoam buoys used on fish farms as a cause of ocean pollution. That's a styrofoam is a one-way product. So they put the buoy and when the buoy basically starts to disintegrate, they just replace it with a new one and let the old one go. The use of styrofoam buoys has increased rapidly with the development of underwater farming. The method requires ropes with seeds or eggs attached to be sunk into the water, and styrofoam buoys play a crucial role. In particular, they are used extensively on the oyster farms on the southern coast, even under the water. Most of the ocean is invisible to us. Just what is happening to our oceans? With help from Korea Institute of Ocean Science and Technology, ocean trash from the shores of Gonje on the southern coast of Korea was analyzed. Because styrofoam floats on water, a specimen was taken from the top 20 centimeters from the water's surface. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. 
스티로폼 부자가 하나가 한 62리터 정도가 표준 부자인데 저희가 그 크기를 계산해 보면 부자 하나에서 완벽하게 다 알갱이로 쪼개졌다고 계산해 보면 대략 한 700만 개 이상의 조각 그 알갱이로 떨어져 나옵니다. 쪼개지고 흩어진, 흩어진 것들은 지금 바다에 영원히 우리가 수거할 수 없는 상태로 바다에 이제 계속 떠다니게 되는 거죠. 토탈的には結構マンガンとかアエンダとかゾウとかそういうものがあのま生りをかなり吸着してくるのもありますけれども。ヤドカリとかそういうのを食べたりしているということがよく言われてます。その発泡する食べたりなんかしてる。そういうことがよくありますので、まあそういうものが生物にも影響を与えていく可能性がある。Can see organisms really mistake styrofoam for food? An experiment was carried out using polystyrene, the substance, instead of styrofoam itself. The experiment was carried out on zooplankton, classified as copepoda, the primary consumers in the ocean food chain. 동물 플랑크톤 여과 섭식자들 선정한 다음에 걔네들한테 이 폴리스타를 먹여서 현미 영상으로 소화 기관 안에 폴리스타렌이 섭취가 됐는지 안 됐는지를 확인하는 실험인데 지금까지는 먹는다고는 다 알려져 있었지만 실제로 그 확인한 반은 없거든요. For the first time in the world, polystyrene was fed to zooplankton in an experiment. The result was shocking. The fluorescent material could be seen right in the center of its body. It was polystyrene. Other changes could be observed in its body too. 먹어서 이제 여러 가지 영향이 관찰이 됐거든요. 그 다음 과정이 그러면 얘를 그 상인 단계 생물이 먹냐? 그건 또 하나의 화두거든요. The zooplankton that ate the polystyrene was included in another experiment. This time, a young rock bream was observed. The two were put together, and the rock bream was observed over time to see if it would eat the contaminated zooplankton. 조금만 물고기 새끼를 갖고 이제 먹이 실험을 했는데 그 먹이 생물이 먹은 그 플랑크톤류가 먹은 거를 역시 어류가 먹었고 어류 체내 그게 남아 있는 걸 확인을 했거든요. Basically all organisms of the marine food chain can ingest this uh, this microplastics which it is called then and that can basically cause important harm to the marine food chain. Food chains are a hierarchy and order that has long existed in the ecosystem. The food chain with plankton at the bottom naturally binds its predators above it. And humans are at the very top of the pyramid-shaped food chain. At this rate, styrofoam might make its way onto our dining table in the near future. Expanded polystyrene, sometimes called styrofoam, is one of the most pernicious of all plastics used in the marine environment, and it really shouldn't be used at all. Famous for the active volcano Tsukurajima, Kagoshima Prefecture is at the southwestern tip of Kyushu in Japan. Its seaside villages are well known for fish farming. Tarumitsu village has some 600 fish farms. Yellowtail is the most common fish. They produce up to 4,000 tons a year, making this area the main producer in Japan. The boys at Tarumitsu village caught our attention. The white styrofoam boys were nowhere to be seen. 10年前はあの普通の発泡スチロール使ってて潰れたやつで海岸が汚れてましたけどこの状況じゃいけないって魚も食べて死にますからあのとりあえず風呂と替えようということでリサイクルできるようにちょっとあのFRPでコーティングし
the water is clear and blue. You cannot find styrofoam trash piles anywhere in Tarumitsu. The efforts of the villages over the last 10 years have changed the ocean. However, covering the surface of styrofoam buoys with other materials does not completely solve the problem. A more fundamental alternative is a biodegradable high polymer resin that is being developed by a Korea research lab. PBAT is the material used to make environmentally friendly buoys. Like styrofoam, it is made from petroleum, but it can be completely biodegraded by microorganisms like bacteria and fungi. Styrofoam buoy 같은 경우는 생분해성 재질로서 그 대체를 함으로 인해 가지고 녹아서 없어져 버려서 추후에 환경에 영향을 주지 않도록 자연의 부하를 적게 주는 그런 재질로서 대체가 돼야 될 것으로 판단을 하고 있습니다. Efforts are being made to revive the dying ocean. But there is one thing that we were missing. The alternatives were all based on petroleum, a fossil fuel. A startup company in New York. Two college students started this company with an innovative idea for a new invention. Now they've become quite famous as a green technology company. After two years of research and development, they have come up with something truly amazing. Uh, we take mushrooms and agricultural waste and we grow them together into molded shapes to replace things like styrofoam packaging, uh, beach toys, uh, or flotation devices in the ocean. Making styrofoam with mushrooms is actually quite simple. Agricultural waste, such as grain husks, is sterilized and mixed with mushroom mycelium. The mixture is placed inside a mold. After 72 hours, mushroom styrofoam is made. Actually, it would be more accurate to say mushroom styrofoam is cultivated. Can this invention really solve the catastrophic flaw of the existing styrofoam? And the great thing would be if they did lose it, if there was a storm and it went out into the sea, um, it would start to break into little pieces. But rather than being toxic pollutants that are fishy, like mercury, um, it would actually be nutrition that would feed the ocean. Maine, on the east coast of the USA, is very famous for something. Lobsters. The lobster fishery, everything about it is in many ways connected to petroleum products. The traps are coated wire, plastic coated wire. The lines are wire, the buoys are styrofoam, and there are losses. Um, we estimate somewhere between 5 and 10 percent of gear is lost each year. The buoys that mark the location of the traps are the biggest problem. To reduce ocean waste, the people have made a big decision earlier this year to use mushroom foam buoys. The initial experiment, I think, uh, was a success in that we've got buoys that we tried on the water, but there's still development to be done and challenges to meet. We have this throwaway lifestyle and the idea that you discard things, things are cheap. You just use once and throw away. It's okay if you lose some styrofoam floats because we buy another styrofoam float and stick out there. Not that expensive, so we don't worry about it. This whole lifestyle has to change. In 1954, styrofoam was a revolutionary material. But today, it has become a disaster. Perhaps we have been blinded by its convenience and cheap cost to lose sight of what is really important to us. It is time to get our ocean back from the clutches of styrofoam.